Daddy should be here any moment. Just make yourself comfortable. <laughs> you know, Chester, I feel kind of funny discussing our marital problems with the minister. I feel funny discussing it with anybody. Of course, it would be worse if it were a priest. Well, it would be like discussing a film with a blind man. <laughs> A rabbi would have been nice. They seem very wise. But I suppose you have to be Jewish. I wonder which religion does the biggest business in this sort of thing. Ah, uh, sorry I'm late. Got stuck at a death. I beg your pardon? Funeral. Just did a funeral. Poor guy got killed roller skating. Oh. He fell? Drowned. Was skating in the park, couldn't stop, skated into the lake, couldn't swim. That was that. <laughs> Left a wife, two kids, and a Porsche with no problems. <laughs> but on to happier things. You are the Tates, and you are here because... Go ahead, Chester. Oh, no, Jess, you can go first. No, you tell it better. Uh, well, we have a problem. It not a big problem, really. Actually, it's a little problem. <laughs> but it's big enough to be a problem. It's been a problem for a while. I never thought it was a problem. But, <laughs> but uh, now I see that the problem, which is our problem, is really my problem. And of course, being my problem, it actually becomes her problem. And uh, that, in a nutshell, is the problem. Well put, Chester. <laughs> Could you be a little more specific, do you suppose? Chester goes through women the way an elephant goes through peanuts. <laughs> See, he fools around with anything, anytime, anywhere. <laughs> he lies, he deceives, he sneaks around. He cheats before work, he cheats during work, he cheats after work. He cheated on our honeymoon, he cheated on our anniversary. He cheated while I was in labor in the hospital. <laughs> In the hospital. <laughs> he has cheated practically every week of every month of every year of our entire marriage. But other than that, he has been a wonderful husband. I see. Well, it's starting to take you a long time to come and see me. Took her all this time to catch me. <laughs> of course. Well, uh, I see this sort of problem a lot. It seems to be going around. I think part of the reason is that there are no more Indians. <laughs> Beg your pardon? You see, in the olden days, we had Indians to worry about. Where were the Indians? Were the Indians surrounding us? Were the Indians angry Indians? Did the Indians want our horses? Nobody fooled around because you couldn't relax long enough. <laughs> Now, we got no more Indians. I see. The best marriages were in the Apache territory because those were the worst Indians. Hostiles without, no hostility within. We have a lot to thank the Indians for. Happy marriages, nice beadwork. Uh, well, what do we do now that there are no more Indians? Aggravate some other group, maybe. Look, I don't think I need Indians. I want a change. I want desperately never to look at another woman again, and I sincerely think that I can do that. Excuse me, Daddy? Can I please borrow the car keys? Sure, Angel Puss. Thanks. My daughter. I see the resemblance. Well, Mr. Tate, I see your problem. I have trouble understanding it, but I do see it. I mean, if I had such a lovely, feminine, genteel, sophisticated, enticing, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous piece of gorgeousness in my house, I'd never leave. <laughs> Well, yes, of course, but I mean, gorgeous. see the promise. Gorgeous. Uh, your ministry. Uh, how do you keep your marriage trouble-free? Divorce. 
Married 16 years. My wife decided we had to have new carpeting in the family room. Guy came to lay the carpet, probably got a little confused about what he was there to lay. <laughs> left me with four rolls of Bigelow shag and took off with my wife. How awful. Might have been an Indian. <laughs> well, that's beside the point. We're here to help you people. Now, the problem is Mr. Tate's. It is not your problem. You have no problems. Oh, contraire. <laughs> now, Mr. Tate, we have a group that meets here once a week. It's a bunch of men like yourself with the same sort of problem. It's kind of a group therapy situation led by a very competent lay therapist. I used to lead the group myself, but I had to quit. The stories got me too excited. <laughs> you should hear those guys talk. <laughs> anyway, I think it'll do you a lot of good. Come tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. Well, I've got to run. A wedding. Complete waste of time. They haven't got a chance. <laughs> He's 49, she's 21, been married four times. I give it 10 days. <laughs> yeah? Hi. Make it fast. Uh, we don't want any. <laughs> yeah? Is this 58 Milburn Street? Who wants to know? I'm looking for Polly Dawson. I ain't her. <laughs> Do you have me confused with somebody you really hate? You see this? Yes, I do. I see that. Take a good look at it, because in about two seconds, it's going to be behind you. Look, could, could you just tell Polly that I'm here? I'd rather not. For me? Beat it. Look, could I leave a note? Uh, Eddie, what's going on around here? Nothing, Mama. Oh, excuse me. Hi. I'm here to see Polly. Oh, for God's sake, Eddie, let the man in. Hi. Polly! Someone to see you! Danny. I was in the neighborhood. I hey, who I... is this creep? Uh, th this is Danny. Hi there. Where'd you find him? Oh, we met last week at the cemetery. Oh, you hang around cemeteries. <laughs> I was there visiting my wife. Oh. And you just happened to pick up this black chick along the way so the day wouldn't be a total loss. <laughs> Danny, why don't you sit down and make yourself comfortable? <laughs> I I'm Polly's mother, and this is her brother, Eddie. Hi. Why don't you get out now while you can still crawl? I think he's warming up to me. Eddie, why don't you get out of here? Next time, I won't be so polite. <laughs> so, uh, how'd you find me? It was easy, really. My stepfather and my brother and me staked out the graveyard for a couple of days, and when you didn't show there, I just started it on the phone book. There's only a couple hundred Dawsons. Oh, I never did tell you my address, did I? Or your last name, or your phone number. Well, you didn't ask. I didn't think it was a good time. I guess you changed your mind, huh? Yeah, I did. I don't hear nobody talking. <laughs> I was taking a breath, Eddie. Is it all right if we breathe? OK, so long as it don't become audible. <laughs> It's just that I felt really good that afternoon. I haven't felt that good in a long time, and I... I wanted to feel that way again, so I found you. Was that okay? Yes. Because I felt the same way. You did? Yes. Sounds like a damn movie. <laughs> and you're, you're glad I'm here? Glad? <laughs> I'm amazed. I'm incensed. <laughs> Eddie! When I thought I might not ever see you again, I got a little worried. I didn't. You didn't? Uh-uh. Because there are only seven Dallases in the phone book. <laughs> see, I did a little research, too. I guess this means that maybe I can see you some more then, huh? 
I would say that's correct. <laughs> well, I have to come here. Eddie, please. <laughs> hey, look, it's only about 7 o'clock now. Do you want to go out? Sure, let's go. Have her home by 8. <laughs> Oh, honey, if you go by the cemetery, stop by Grandpa and say hi. Oh, well, we're not going to go there, Ma. Oh. Ready? Yes. It was nice meeting you. Oh, nice meeting you, Danny. <laughs> See you again, brother. <laughs> You touch one hair on her head, and I will break every bone in your head. <laughs> He's a little hostile, isn't he? Oh, don't worry about Eddie. He gets it from our father. That's comforting. <laughs> <laughs> 